everyone, and welcome to the grand finale of Donkey Kong Land 3 for the Game Boy. And in this episode, I'm pretty sure you know what we'll be doing. We will be finishing off the game once and for all. But first I'd like to show you this. Um, we could go into the sheepy shop, but for some reason I don't have enough coins. And look how many coins you have to get in order to do it. 77. And, you know in the last episode where I said 77 bonus coins are the amount that you need to uh, collect every single one? So basically, you know, we have to skip the uh, sheepy shop and collect the last bonus coins hidden in the two levels. So we've got to do that first before we move on. And oh great, I take the first hit against the bazooka. Brilliant. So let's just mine out this time. There we go, that's the way you do it and take out these recoils, bounce on the crumples and all that. Now, um, I've got to say, um, with this being the grand finale for an episode, it's gone by really fast. Seriously, um, I was looking back at episode one, seeing, um, how long it took, and it only took, like, a week to finish this. Now, there is this thing I'd like to show you, but I'm gonna cut ahead until I do it. Okay, so what you got to do, you could do this as Dixie, but you can do it just right as Kitty, like that. So, basically, you know, what if you'd known that when you roll off an edge, that if you jump, you can jump in mid-air? That's useful for reaching the bonus barrel as Kitty. So, just remember, you know, it is possible to do it as Kitty as well. Dixie isn't used for everything for getting uh, barrels high up, that you have to bounce some barrels sh shot by the bazookas. So, just remember that. Let's see what's down here. A coin. Now, really, I found that unintentionally, because I thought it was off to the left, but on my practice file, I just jumped and suddenly fell down to the coin. I thought, oh, brilliant. So, you know, just sometimes jumping down straight can lead you to good places. But don't trust it all the time, because, you know, sometimes there'll be, uh, bottomless pits and all that. So, yeah. I want to carry the barrel down here, just in case, because you never know, I might have not rolled, a uh, rolled, is that a word? Yeah, well, I might have not rolled in time uh, to, you know, hit the recoil. So, in other words, it's for my protection. And oh, okay, I've got to say this. If that rope was not there, I would have just fell in the, the acid, white acid thing, whatever the heck it is and died. So good thing the rope was there or else, well, I could have had to start all over again, so that wouldn't have been very good. Anywho, let's just take out these cobbles, and we are pretty much near the end of this level already. So, you know, even the levels in Lost World, they are still quite small, but they're really fun if you ask me. To be honest, this game is a lot of fun. I still need to play Donkey Kong Land 1 and 2 just to see, you know, where all of these original ideas came from and see uh, which one's better and all that, but, you know. Speaking of which, there's one thing I don't understand. Why aren't the Donkey Kong Land games released on the 3DS eShop? I mean, come on, eShop has been around, like, ever since uh, June the 7th, 2011, and they haven't released Donkey Kong Land 1, 2, or 3. Really, I think they should deserve a port, because they're really good games. Make it happen, Nintendo, because I'd like to see that. That means I wouldn't really have to track down, you know, an original copy of Donkey Kong Land or Donkey Kong Land 2, as I can just find it on eShop and then download it. Enough of me, um, though, bragging on about, uh, why it's not on eShop, how about I just get back to the level design. So, we are going to go make our way across here, avoiding all of the carbines, and sure enough, there is a knocker. But, just to be curious, I want to carry it with me, just in case because there is a hedgehog. I could have rolled into it, but, you know, just to save a bit of time, I just uh, throw barrels at them and all that, so I don't really have to bother pressing any buttons, because I swear my keyboard is quite insensitive. I'm pretty sure you've seen that in the last episode, like, you know, with Squid the Spider, because I swear I pressed the, the jump button, but, uh, it didn't really register. That, and I think the collision detection in Donkey Kong Land 3 is a bit slightly off, let's just say. Although then again, this game does have a lot of stuff go going on in it, because there will be slowdown in that, but that's because, you know, there's so much content going on, and they did a really good job for a Game Boy game. Anyway, that's, uh, that level done, onwards to the next one, which is Ghoulish Grotto, the final level in the game. 
well, really the sheepy shop is, but I wouldn't really count that as a level, that's more of just a bonus area. But, uh, yeah. So, while we're going through here, we are going to take out all these enemies and copters. Okay, yeah, they're there to damage us, but um, even so, you know, what's the point of having them fly down and let us bounce on them if they're not really going to take us anywhere? Because, you know, even me, uh, bouncing as high as I could on them, there was just nothing up there. It was just a load of spikes from the cave that do nothing. So, uh, yeah. Oh, dear. Really, what I meant to do is jump over him and throw the barrel so that it hit him, but, of course, that didn't happen. And there we go, that is probably the last uh, DK coin yet, because really, you know in the uh, sheepy shops you get DK coins, you get uh, coins, you get lives and all that, that's why we've got 41 at the moment, because you know I said there's 42 DK coins no, uh, in total, the, the one more, the last one sorry, is in the sheepy shop, so just remember that. And that's the thing that I really like about it actually. I like how, you know, when you can access the sheepy shop in Lost World, you think, um, oh brilliant, that means I can go get things, right? But nope, you can't. And another thing I found out is this, actually. You know the watches that we collect um, when we defeat a bonus round because it gives out like these clocks? The clever thing about it is that um, in the King K. Rule, uh, sorry, Baron K. Rule, Joel, because it's Baron, you know, it's he's Elias. Um, the thing that's good about it is you need six watches in order to fight him, but um, in order to do that, you're going to have to collect all of the DK coins and uh, bonus coins in order to fight him. Because you know where uh, Baron K. Rollenstein says he needs all of the DK coins and the watches? It means you need to collect the bonus coin, all of the bonus coins anyway, because, you know, the only way you're going to get the last watches to go in the, the sheepy shop, but you need all of the bonus coins to do so. So it's quite a clever way of doing it, if you ask me, because they don't reveal it too much, you know, they don't say, you need the bonus coins, you need the watches, you need the DK coins. They just say two things, and let your user mind to it, really. It's something that I really like. Okay, this bit is basically just... Okay, I did not mean to do it like that, so I'm going to cut ahead when I'm back. Okay, that's not what I meant to do. You really are supposed to take him out over there and then take out them like that. On the next bit though, it's easy as you just got to stay here and take out the one in the middle and then fly all the way down. Uh, I don't really need that DK barrel because you know I've already got a power up, meaning I've, if I take a hit, I'll just get another chance. So, let's just take out these buzzes for no reason. I really don't know why I always have to go for the top ones. It becomes a bit of a habit when you're Squawks the Parrot, because when you see an enemy, you just have to take it out. Probably because, you know, you want to get used to the distance that you uh, throw your nuts, let's just say. I really don't know what they are because of, you know, the colour codings in this thing that I've rendered it in. But, um, even so. Let's go get the N letter, meaning once we collect the G, that is all of the Kong letters in every level. Okay, okay, I really don't think that's how you're supposed to do it, because you're supposed to wait until it, you know, aims upright to get you up there, but, uh, eh, I guess I could do sequence breaking. Okay, I kind of mucked up my thing there, because really I was supposed to wait for the barrel to stand upright to launch me up there. So I'm going to kill myself, because, um, you know, I want to make sure that I don't miss out on anything and all that. Anywho, see you guys in a bit. Okay, we are back, so this time let's wait patiently for the barrel to stand upright so that then I can shoot myself upwards and you'll see why I needed it. Eventually. Maybe. There we go. Again, it you know, takes a bit of a while for them to just go in the direction you want them to. But it's funny just as how I ducked it did it. It's like I activated a, an invisible switch or something. Now, this last bonus round is quite not very challenging, if you ask me. It's just a bunch of recoils and you just either jump or roll at them. If you ask me, I think the Squid of the Spider bonus round should have been, you know, the last one. Because it was really difficult. Because, you know, you've got to really... First of all, you've got to understand that Squid of the Spider can um, shoot web and make platforms out of them. But, you know, you still got to make sure that your jumping things are okay. You've got to be quick about it. You've got to make sure you don't fall off once and you've got to not take damage. But that one, it was just 
Oh, there's some recoils, go kill them. You know, it's... It's not really a bad thing or anything, but... You know, I just think... Yeah, that wasn't very challenging for a last one. So, let's just take out these cobbles, and there we go! That is all of the Kong letters in the game, which were really worthless to me, but, um, you know, they were helpful for you guys if you want to get extra lives and all that. So, that's all the Kong letters. Me, I don't have to click them again. Let's go and to the sheepy shop. But first of all, I want to go to K. Rule stand and show you what he says, because even if you collect the DK coins and bonus rounds, he will say this. Double or nothing? What do you say? Come back with six watches and all the DK coins. So this is what I mean by, you know, he says the six watches, but he doesn't say the bonus coins as well. But in order to get the sixth watch, you have to collect all the bonus coins to go in the sheepy shop and get it anyway. So, you know, like, he doesn't really give it away too much. He makes you use your mind in the whack. But I'm going to cut it here when I'm done. There we go, that is the very last one done, and surprisingly I did that on my first try. In my practice while it took a couple of tries because the last uh, sheepy shot bonus round is actually really difficult if you ask me. It took me a couple of tries but I got it in the end and yet yeah, on my recording I do it first time. That's really weird but I will take it. Anyway, let's just go save our game for the last time. And look at that, we got 77 bonus coins, 42 DK coins, and 6 watches. So at the moment we are 91%. And of course you say keep out for those Kremlins. Which is misspelled by the way, because he forgot to put a G in there. But, with all that done, how about we go to the last level and take on Baron K. Rollingstein. So, you ha have found all of my secrets? Come and have a go if you think you're tough enough. So, let's take on the final boss. Okay, it's a different layout this time. Instead of being us in like a tube or a sewer pipe or anything, instead we're in like a cave. But, um, it's a bit more difficult this time because instead of just shooting lightning, you'll go around the place and fire these bombs. And of course, it'll, a barrel will spawn and you hit it at him. Now, I don't know if he's supposed to fall down there, because I think he's supposed to bounce around, but, you know, it's a bit easier if you make him fall down one of the pits, because it means he doesn't bounce around at you all the time. But, uh, there is one thing that I like to do, actually, and that is change his Dixie, because if you just stand here, he gets hit by it. Because, you know, Kitty, Kitty just carries it with his hands, but, uh, DixieCon just, um, picks it up with her hair, I mean, you don't really have to jump or throw it or anything on that bit. But, you know, don't do it all the time, because there will be times where uh, Baron K. Rule will switch positions, like here he's down. So if I was just holding it, I would have got hit and took damage, and that wouldn't have been very good. Uh, let's just mine out for these lightning bolts, and throw the barrel at him once I get it. Oh, great, I missed. I have to try that again. Okay, so where is he coming this time? He is- oh! Oh, great. I died on the final boss. A brilliant way to end this. Let's try again. Okay, now that I've hit him again as Dixie Kong, let's make sure I dodge out of the way of his attack this time. There we go. And of course, you know, watch out for the lightning bolts again. Really, in boss battles, I like to just, you know, cut it when I do the, the previous hit, not really just as I dodge, like, say, the last lightning bolt, because otherwise you think, wait, where was this again? Because, you know, it's easier to know where I am, because you'll remember what happened just after the previous hit. Uh, anywho, let's just pick up this, and luckily he was above me, so I could just be Dixie Kong and then hit him as he came past him. Oh, uh, great. I was supposed to dodge that, but of course it didn't really work. Now, this bit will kind of mix things up, because he'll shoot a bomb, but afterwards he'll shoot some lightning. So, you know, don't just think, oh, he's shooting bombs, that's all he's going to do, because he will mix things up a bit. So, you've always got to be aware of how he attacks. This boss is quite difficult, though, because, well, you know, you've got to be really aware. You've got to focus a lot in order to beat him. But, that is the final boss done in the game. So now, let's watch the credits. Now, I would say this, actually. Um, to be honest... When you defeat, uh, 
to the stage, you know, K Rule's Last Stand, all that happens is there's no credits. These credits here are actually taken from episode 10, you know, where we did the K Rule duel in the sewer pipe or tube. So, um, I made sure to put it here because, come on, it would be a bit weird, don't you think, uh, where we've got like, I don't know, 70 to 80% of the game and yet, um, when we fight him, suddenly the credits come down even though we haven't really completed it. So I just thought I'd put the credits in here instead. As you can see, all it is is just the list of enemy names coming down. I don't think they actually show the makers of this game, from what I know, because, um, well, I've really never seen it as a child, I just saw the enemy names. If you, if you ask me, I prefer it that way anyway. Well, to be honest, it's nice to see, um, you know, the makers of the game and all that, but, you know, it's different to see a list of the enemy names, because this is the sort of thing, actually, that, um, also made me realise what the names of the enemies were, because, um, you know, I did look up online and all that, but once I got to here, like in episode 10, that's how I knew what a Kachaka was and all that, because I just looked at the credits and just learned all the enemy names. You see, look, it just says Kachaka. So by the time we got to Lost World, I already knew what they meant, meaning I didn't have to do any research or anything. And it's funny how most of these animations are repeated and all that, especially the, uh, the limb win, which we're gonna get to in a minute. Because, uh, it's quite funny what the animation is. There's Bazza. You know, just the fish that got shot out of those torpedoes. And there's a clasp. You know, the ones that go across the ropes. And all that. So, what's next? I just want to show you the Lemwin bit. There's Bristles. You know, this is just evidence that I got all the enemy names right, really. So, the uh, resources that I got them from were quite, uh reliable, to be honest, because, well, I mean, look at it, it, most of it's true. There's Crumple. If you ask me, there's sort of like a bit of lower frame rate when he walks. Oh, this is what I mean by the Lemwing. Look. <laughs> it's just got, like, that bit of animation, because the rest of it's just still, because, you know, it's just moving across. <laughs> I don't know, I just find that really hilarious. But, uh, there's Copter, for some reason, I don't know why that was in the game, but, uh, even so. Now, I would say this, but Donkey Kong Land 3 is a good game. I'd recommend you get it. Hopefully Nintendo will release it for Nintendo eShop, like I was saying earlier. But um, if you have like something like a Game Boy, or a Game Boy Color, or a Game Boy Advance, uh, go ahead and track down the original copy. Because um, it's a good game, I think you'll enjoy it. You could play Donkey Kong Land 1 or 2 or 3, but um, you know, you could try Donkey Kong Land, you can play them in chronological order if you want, but, um, well, you could do it the way I did it, where I just played three and just missed out on one and two, unfortunately. Um, but I don't care, do it any way you like. As you can see, there is Chaos, and you may have seen this, actually, in the artwork when I did the outro. It showed him as a robot. That's because in, uh, Donkey Kong Country 3, Dixie's Double Trouble, um, when you fight the boss, like, halfway through it, his helmet pops off and it reveals him as, like, some sort of Terminator or something. Um, on to the goodies. Just like that 1970s kid show. <laughs> oh, great, I had to bring that up. <laughs> um, uh, it's funny how most of these characters, like Bear, Wrinkly and all them, where half of their bodies are missing because, you know, the way they were programmed. Because, you know, Wrinkly, all he's doing was... Or she, so I was saying, she was just rock, rocking back and forth in the chair, so you couldn't really see the rest of her body, so half of it's cut out in the credits. And, um, there's Squid of the Spider, a really, really underused character in the game, if you ask me. Squawks the Parrot was used a lot, though, so that was fair. So, good thing we came in most of the time. I don't believe it. You pesky cons have beaten me again. Take my six watches and see if you can beat the time trial. Okay, so what this is basically is, um... When you defeat, uh, the Cable's Last Stand level, what happens is, is there's no credits, it just cuts to this. But of course, you know, due to me editing the videos, I wanted to show the credits first. And basically all you get is when you beat the game with all the collectibles, you unlock time attack mode. And, um... If, of course, if you just want to, you know, go back to the game, just go down to re-enter game. These time attacks I won't really go through because, you know, it's basically the same levels except me speedrunning them. So I'll do that probably off-screen or something. 
Anywho, I guess that is everything in Donkey Kong Land 3 done. As you can see, in every area, we have an exclamation mark and a DK coin. And just to be a bit weird and act like we've just returned home, let's just say, how about we go into Cape Cod Swallop and say goodbye to the bear? I don't know, I just felt like saying goodbye to the bear in my recording for some reason. Um, no, we don't want that. No, I just came here to see your low frames of animation. And how about we save the game and end it off here? He's still got our tea ready. How long's that been there for? That's probably gone cold by now. <laughs> But uh, one weird thing is this, actually, it says 97%. The strange thing in Donkey Kong Land 3, actually, is once you've collected everything, it doesn't show it as 100%, it just shows it as 97 So, really, we have collected everything, but, um, even so. Because, uh, with the time attack mode, um, if I access it in a minute, well, actually, first I'll show you this. See, we've got 78 uh, bonus coins, 42 DK coins, and 12 watches. So really we've collected everything, but you know, even when, if we just go into it, we go to the time attack mode. So, basically, you only get 97%, and the highest percentage you can get is 103%, but that's if you beat all time attack mode. But of course, I'm not going to do that for now, because, you know, it, we've already been through the levels. So, let's just pretend that we've got 100%. You know, 100% in all the collectibles, at least. But, with that, I hope you've enjoyed this, and I will see you in my next Let's Play.